Good evening, DCC. Why don't you stand to your feet tonight? Welcome to our New Year's Eve service of 2022. Come on, my, my, my. Tell somebody it's been a fearless year. Come on, turn to somebody and say it's been a fearless year. Come on, we've been breaking the limits off. Come on. I'm breaking up. Come on, are you excited tonight? to welcome in the new year. Come on. Put your hands together. Hey. Now, family, we welcome you forward to join us. Hey. I may go through a valley with darkness all around. My eyes are fixed on you, Lord.
Soldiers, ultra beam out the solar. When I get to heaven's gate, I ain't gotta peek over. Keeping perfect composure. When I scream at the sofa, I ain't mean I'm just focused. I ain't mean I'm just focused. Put a lean out slower. Got us clean out of soda. Before the flood, people judge. They did the same thing to Noah. Everybody wanted Yandy. The Jesus Christ did the laundry. They say that we start on Monday, but the strong start on Sunday. Won't be in bondage to any man. John 8:33. We the descendants of Abraham. Yea, shall be made free. John 8:36. To whom the Son says free is free indeed. He say the rest like me.
is a victory clap. Come on. It's a victory clap for what he's done in 2022. But we're clapping in advance for what he's about to do in 23. Hallelujah. Break through in our minds. Break through in our families. Break through in this ministry. Hallelujah. In our city. Are you going to join your faith with us as we sing it tonight? Here we go. Break through in my heart. Break through in my mind. Break through in my spirit. Break through in my soul. Break through in my weakness. Break through in my struggle.
On a hill of Calvary, my Savior bled for me. My Jesus set me free. Look at the wounds that give me life. Grace flowing from his side, no greater sacrifice. What is done? What is done? All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sons are forgiven, my future is heaven. I praise God. Come on, we praise him for what he's done. Sing with us. Sing for the freedom he has won. Even that is dead and done. His life is overcome. Come on, we speak that name. Sing, say the name.
Sing a sing.
person next to you, 2023 is just for me. Amen. 2023 is just for you. God has plans and purposes for you in 2023. God bless you. You may be seated. Isn't God good? Amen. And this year we're declaring Jubilee 2023. Amen. The year of Jubilee, and John's going to talk about it. God's favor upon us this year. Amen. We're going to step into it in a moment. And total restoration. Whatever the devil has stolen, he has to return it in 2023 in Jesus' name. In 2020, he tried. In 2021, he tried. In 2022, he tried. But total restoration for you and your family. In 2023, we decree in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, we're going to get ready now to take God's tithes and His offering. And uh, I want to just share a quick word with you because we're going to cross over to our Phoenix congregation, and we're always so happy to have them with us. And, uh, you know, the Lord asked me to ask you and to ask myself this question as well. What are you doing with your three T's? You might wonder, what on earth is this blonde woman talking about this evening? <laughs> what are you doing with your three T's? It's not your toothbrush and your toenails and your... <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that tonight. But some of you thought you needed to clip your toenails. So anyway, we won't go down those roads. But what are you doing with your three T's? And it's very important to God what you do with your three T's. And you say to me tonight... Well, what are those three T's, Joy? Well, it's your time, it's your talent, and it's your treasure. What are you doing, and what are you going to do, and what are you doing right now with your time, with your talent, and with your treasure? What will you do with it? Because your treasure, your time, and your talent is very, very important to God. And you say, well, why? Because the time, the talent, and the treasure that we have will one day come to an end. We're not gonna have it with us forever. But when we invest our treasure in God's kingdom, it becomes eternal, it becomes everlasting, it becomes never ending, and it becomes indestructible. Isn't that awesome? So what are you doing with your time, with your talent, and with your treasure? So I want to just challenge you with that a little bit tonight because we're going to step over into 2023. And I heard somebody say this. They said, time is free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. Once you've lost it, you can never get it back. <laughs> That's frightening, isn't it? Once you've used it, you can never get it back. And then what about your talent tonight? Everyone sitting here this evening has a God-given talent and a God-given ability. And we all have different talents and we all have different abilities. And Jesus talks about talents in Matthew 25, and he gives three people different talents, and he gives one five, and he gives another two, and he gives another one, and the one with five did a lot with it, and the one that did, got two did a lot with it, and the one that got one, he hid it under the ground. And Jesus said to him, you're wicked and you're lazy. Wouldn't that be terrible? to one day get to heaven and God's given you all these talents and all these abilities, and then he says to you, you wicked <laughs> and you were lazy with what I gave you, hey? I mean, wouldn't that be embarrassing one day? But I wanna tell you tonight that God is calling forth every talent and every ability in this house tonight in Jesus' name. 
I can hear entrepreneurs right now in the spirit. Come on, entrepreneurs happening. Because every talent and every ability is coming forth in Jesus' name. In 2023, come on. 2023 is for you. Every favorable thing that God has for you is coming your way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on. So then in Luke 12, 16 to 21, Jesus says this. And when Jesus says things, I think we need to listen. Amen. And it says, he told this parable, the land of a rich man produced plentiful, and then he thought to himself, what shall I do for I have nowhere to store all these crops? And then he said, what will I do? I will tear down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will do all my grain and all my goods. And then he goes on, and I will, and I will do this. And you know, (laughs) we actually can't do anything without Jesus. Amen. If you're going to step into 2023 and be productive and be successful, do it with Jesus. Because this guy, he carries on and he says, and I will say to my soul, soul, you'll have ample goods laid up for you. For many years, relax, eat, be merry. But God said to him, fool, don't be a fool for all your life. Don't be fools. That's what Jesus is saying. This night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? You know, we can't take anything with us when we go. That's why I'm asking you, what are you going to do with your time? What are you going to do with your treasure? What are you going to do with your talents? Amen. And so then in verse 21, it says, so the one who lays up treasure for himself is not rich towards God. What is Jesus saying? He's saying, stop just living for stuff. Amen. Stop just living for things. It's a big mistake because you can't take anything with you when you go. So let's be wise. Let's listen to Jesus and be wise. And we've just come out of Christmas, and of course, you all know the story of the wise men. And you know what they say if, um, (coughs) maybe I shouldn't say this, but I think I will. If three wise women (laughs) found Jesus in the stable, they would have cooked a meal. (laughs) They would have cleaned the stable, and they would have made sense of, they would have made food, amen. But the three wise men, well, it wasn't three wise men. A whole lot of wise men came. The Bible didn't say how many wise men there were. But a lot of wise men came to Jesus. And uh, they were the professors. They were the scientists. They were the doctors. They were the mathematicians. They were the lawyers. They were very clever people. They were wise. And isn't it good for us to learn from wise people? Actually, if these men were alive today, I think they would would be um, these social media, you know, these guys that uh, are influencers. They'd all be social media influencers because I think some people look at Facebook and these influencers more than they do the Bible. And then they think they're going to become wise with influencers. No, this is the wisest book that you'll ever learn from. Amen. Amen. So there goes all these wise men and, uh, you know, they, they see Jesus and we need to look at the conduct of what wise men do. We need to learn from clever people and educated people. Amen. So let's see what these wise men, what did they do with their time? What did they do with their treasure? Amen. And what did they do with their treasures? So they used their time, first of all, to seek Jesus. We don't know how long it took them, and they say it took between four and five months. They followed the stars. They used their talents. They were skilled. They navigated. They looked to see where Jesus was. And then they gave Jesus their worship. Amen. They gave Jesus their worship because clever and intelligent people know where to invest their time, their talent, and their money. Amen. I've never heard anybody taking any instructions or or any advice from a tramp. Have you ever? 
You ever been seen on, you know, all these tramps on the street and here we're all taking notes to find out how to be successful? No, you need to find out from successful people how to be successful. Amen. And so they invested their time, they invested their talent, and they invested their money in Jesus. Amen. Because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. So make up your mind. Amen. This year, always make the main thing the main thing. His name is Jesus. Always make the main thing the main thing. His name is Jesus. Amen. So in Matthew 6, verse 19, it says, Do not, Jesus says this, don't lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So let's take our tithes and our offering and what we're going to give, it's the last offering that we can give God in 2022. Amen. So let's invest in the kingdom of God. Amen. It's a good investment. Hallelujah. Because it's investing in an everlasting kingdom. Hallelujah. And we give because we love him. So give God your talent. Give God your treasure and give God your time in 2023 and see him restore everything back to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take our tithes. Let's take our offerings as we get ready to give. Heavenly Father, I just bring each and every person to you tonight. As we give to you tonight, I thank you that in 2023, we're going to make more time for you. Amen. Father, I thank you for every gift and every talent in this room. I thank you that you multiplied in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that every treasure that they give you tonight, out of the love of their hearts, I thank you that you're going to multiply it a thousand times more, and you're going to restore everything that the devil has stolen in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you as you give tonight.
say amen, everybody? Amen. amen. Let's give uh, Durban Christian Center Phoenix right now with Pastor Mervyn. Let's put our hands together and give them a big God bless you. God bless you all the way there in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Durban. Can we do a better hand clap, a warm welcome, a warm welcome to Pastor Mervyn, all of the leadership there. Great to have you with us tonight. Great to have you with us as we cross over from 2022 to 2023. Hallelujah. How many of you know that God loves to throw parties? Ah, there's three of you in this place tonight. Not the kind that we used to go to before we got saved, but kind of like what we had tonight, right? As a matter of fact, when you read the Bible family from cover to cover, you will see that he loves to see his people participating in celebrations that bring joy and a spiritual increase in him. Hallelujah. Look at what happened when just one lost sheep was found. The shepherd put him on his shoulders and there was great rejoicing. Hallelujah. Look what happened when their uh, a prodigal son came back to the father. The Bible says the old man, he was so happy, he gave him a ring, put on sandals, put a robe on him, and said, come on, let's, uh, let's have a big chow here. Let's rejoice. Let's be merry. It's time to celebrate. Hallelujah. And you know, when you look at the Bible, in the Old Testament, you will see that God loves feasts and celebrations. And there were seven major feasts of Israel during which the people of Israel celebrated. These seven feasts were Feast of Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Feast of First Fruits, Feast of Pentecost, Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and Tabernacles. And tonight, I want to speak on that sixth feast, which is the Day of Atonement, or like I've called tonight's sermon, at one mint, at one mint, making at one. And the Day of Atonement, if you didn't know, let me just fill you in, happened once a year on the 10th day of the seventh month, and the high priest would go beyond the veil, and he would go into the Holy of Holies, and there, for a moment in time, he was made to be at one with God in a personal and intimate way. I want to tell you tonight, before we go into 23, that we were always meant to be at one with God, at one mint. Adam, right way back in the beginning in the Garden of Eden, was at one with the Father. And right there in the garden, he enjoyed intimacy and a relationship with God, and he walked and talked with God on a daily basis. And as long as he did that, he flourished and he prospered in that garden. But when he sinned, we know that at one moment was severed and Adam was now no longer in fellowship. He was no longer at one with God. And the day of atonement really was God's way of trying to reestablish that at one moment with mankind. Trying to reestablish the closeness, the intimacy that Adam had lost. I want to just talk a little bit about the day of atonement and in a while, you'll understand why I'm talking a little bit about that. But that there were several things that happened on that particular day. There were specific activities and different ceremonies that took place. One of them was the golden censer and incense ministry. In other words, Aaron, as the high priest, was required to enter beyond the veil, carrying the golden censer that had the fire coals, and he had a handful of finely sweet beaten, sweetly beaten incense. And then the Bible says, and you can read this in Leviticus 16, that he would put the incense on the coals so that there would be a cloud of incense. And today, of course, we don't have incense and we don't have smoke, etc., and all of that stuff. But it does talk about our prayers, about our worshiping, and the role that it does when it comes to communicating with God and having moments of intimacy. Do you know that in times of worship and in prayer and in those intimate details or moments that God can reveal some amazing things to us? Hallelujah. I think about Zacharias 
in the book of Luke, the Bible says it was his time to burn incense before the altar. And during that time, in that time of burning incense, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and he had incredible revelations about the, 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 the son that he would have and incredible revelations about this Jesus who was to be born. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Then also with the Day of Atonement, there was a lot of washing. They, they washed themselves quite a bit. There was also the high priest would wear white linen garments. And then also there were a lot of sacrifices. It's estimated that the high priest would, do, would sacrifice nothing less than 15 animals, 15 sacrifices that he would sacrifice himself he couldn't have anybody to help him. He, as the high priest alone, had to perform all of the sacrifices. One of those animals was a bull, and that bull was used specifically so that the high priest could know that he had been atoned for, that he had been cleansed. Why a bull? Because a bull has more blood per square pound of, of flesh on its body. And so the high priest needed to know for sure that he was cleansed, that he was whole. And of course, that speaks to you and I of the perfect sinless ministry of Jesus. But also another two animals that were included in these many sacrifices were two goats. And they would cost a lot and find out which one of the goats would be used for the sacrifice for the Lord. And the other goat would be used as the scapegoat that would then be sent into the wilderness. What they would do with this goat is that they would lay hands on the goat and confess all the sins of the people of the Durban Christian Center here in Jesus Dome and right there in Phoenix. They would confess all the sins of the people and then they would send that goat as a scapegoat in the Hebrew, it's Azazel, which there's a connotation to it being linked to Lucifer. And that goat would go into the wilderness, the place where, where Satan dwells and where his demons dwell. And I believe that it was speaking about the lamb that would come, who would die in our place. Jesus was reminding and putting his finger up the devil's nose and saying, you're not going to take the people. You're going to have me instead. Hallelujah. This was confirmed when he came to the river Jordan and there he's baptized and the Holy Ghost comes upon him and he is led by the Holy Ghost back into the wilderness as the Azazel, the scapegoat to remind the devil that he was fit enough, that he was perfect enough, that he was sinless enough to be your and my scapegoat, that he was good enough, perfect enough to die in your and my stead. Can you say praise the Lord? And then something else they would use. There was a lot of blood that went on during that day. A lot of blood, a lot of blood. And seven times they would take the blood and they would then sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat. And seven, of course, is the number of perfection because it's only the blood of Jesus that can wash you and I clean of every sin. It is only the blood of Jesus Christ that can render and bring the church to its full perfection and purity in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you tonight that if the blood of an animal brought about a ceremonial cleansing in the Old Testament, how much more the blood of Jesus, how much more the blood of God, hallelujah, in the New Testament. I'm here to tell you that no other blood will do. Chicken blood will not do. Pigeon blood will not do. A bull's blood will not do. A ram's blood will not do. It has to be the blood of Jesus, the blood of God himself. Hallelujah. And there is enough power in the blood of Jesus to do this for every single person here. You say, Pastor, enough power to do what? Enough power to get you and I justified. Enough power to allow you and I to enter into a faith covenant and a faith God. Faith covenant with, with God Almighty, a blood covenant. Enough power to get you and I redeemed. Enough power to allow you access into His presence.
enough power to get you and I reconciled, sanctified, cleansed, to have enough peace through the blood of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? One of the last things about the Day of Atonement when everything had been done was that then the Shekinah glory of God would come in that place. Once a year, on the Day of Atonement, everything that they had been doing there the whole year out was for this one-time event where the high priest would go beyond and there would be the Shekinah glory of God in that most holy place. Hallelujah. And it was at this moment that the high priest Aaron was at one, at one moment, at one with God. Hallelujah. And this moment was just for one day on that day where in that moment there was a oneness, God's glory and his covenant and his presence covered that place, covered that high priest. Hallelujah. I'm reminded in Matthew 27 of when the, between the sixth and the ninth hour when Jesus was on that cross. That the Bible says there was a darkness that came over the land. About that ninth hour, he lifted up his voice and he cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then the Bible says that he cried out again with a loud voice and he yielded his spirit. And at that moment, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked and they, the rocks were split and there was a great cataclysmic event that took place. But I'm here to tell you that that way into the most holy place where you and I could encounter the glory and be at one with God was made possible through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you that before we cross over into 2022, I pray to God that you would be at one with God. That no matter what's happened in 2022, no matter the ups and downs, no matter where you failed, no matter where you messed up, we all mess up. I'm here to tell you that we all make mistakes, we all mess up. But I'm here to tell you the good news, you don't have to go across from 22 and into 23 carrying that guilt and that shame, carrying that separation, the fact that you are distant from God, that you are not allowed to have access to His presence. You can through the blood, hallelujah. You can be forgiven tonight. Jesus is in this place. He is very much alive and well. Hallelujah. He's not dead and buried in some tomb, but he rose three days later after he was crucified and then ascended on high where he is living right now, praying for you and I. He's praying right now. He's praying right now that you will not leave 22 the way that you came into 22 and got your fingers crossed and everything else crossed and hoping you're going to make it into 2023. Right now, right now, right now. If you're away from God, you can come back to God. Hallelujah. There is still enough power in the blood to wash you and I of every sin. We don't have to have a goat chair and put our hands on the goat and confess all of your sins and all of my sins. We, 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 we might be here all night confessing my sins. But thank God tonight, there's blood, enough blood for each and every one of you. There's enough power to cleanse you in that blood, to wash you from all of that guilt and shame and embarrassment. And you can come as you are, as you are, as you are, as you are. I want to beseech you for what God has in store for you in 23. Like my wife said, you'll never do it on your own. But you'll do it if you are at one moment with God. That's how it was meant to be. Right from the very word go. Right from the very beginning, God meant and purposed that you would be one with Him. That you would be at peace with Him. That you would be reconciled back to Him. That you would be forgiven and pardoned. Hallelujah. Jesus was that scapegoat. And he reaffirmed 
when the devil tempted him three times he was the devil was trying to say are you are you strong enough to be their scapegoat are you good enough to be their scapegoat are you holy enough to be their scapegoat and Jesus three times was proving, I'm good enough, I'm holy enough, I'm righteous enough, my blood is holy blood, hallelujah. And you can come with every head bowed, every eye closed, right here in the dome, right there in Phoenix. I don't know who you are, and it doesn't matter tonight. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. It doesn't matter if you're tall or short, uneducated, educated, rich or poor. You can come to Jesus. I might not know your name, but God knows your name. You are known by heaven. You, your fingerprints are known. Your voice print is known. Your retina even has a print, and it is known by God himself. You can come with every head bowed, every eye closed. I don't want to move to, uh, to the next place that we have right now. Before we get to sharing the Jubilee thing, if you're away from God and you have no peace, then I want you right now, wherever you are in this place, we're going to pray. And if you want to come to Jesus and have your sins forgiven and start 23 on a new slate, start again, start afresh, man. It doesn't matter. You say, well, I was a complete failure in 2022. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. God is the God of second chances. And maybe it's a third chance. And maybe it's the 10th chance. Maybe it's the 50th chance. It don't matter. As long as there is still breath in your lungs, you have the opportunity. And God is giving you and I the opportunity tonight to be at one with Him. What He destined way back in the Garden of Eden. That was the original purpose of God for you and me to be at one with him to be reconciled back to him to be loved by him to be forgiven by him to be accepted by him hallelujah every head bowed every eye closed right across this auditorium right there in Phoenix as well I want you to pray this prayer would you say off to me heavenly father come on say it like you have a bit of faith in this house tonight heavenly father don't be ashamed. Lift your voice. Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight in Jesus' name. Just as I am, just as I am with all of my faults, all of my failures. And I come to you. I open my heart. I sense your amazing love for me. And I say yes to your love. I say yes to your amazing love right now with my heart I believe and with my mouth I confess that you are the Christ the son of the living God thank you for your blood that still today has the power to cleanse me wash me forgive me right now I am at one with you I receive eternal life and the forgiveness of all of my sins and I'll never be the same in Jesus name now listen to me very carefully if you prayed that prayer if you prayed that prayer you know that you were out of line with God you were away from God for whatever reason but you prayed that prayer that was for you then right where you are we want to acknowledge you where you are in this place, just go ahead and lift your hand up high. Wherever you are, you prayed that prayer. Don't be shy. You prayed that prayer. Let heaven see that hand. Let heaven see that hand. Wherever you are, wherever you are, I'm going to ask you to stay in your seats. Nobody's coming to the front. Right where you are, just lift up your hand. Somebody's going to put a card in your hand. We want you to fill out that card. Go ahead and pass those cards around. They're in Phoenix as well. Go ahead and write your details. Why? Because we'd love to give you a gift. We'd love to make sure that you're okay. We'd love to make sure that you're growing in God. More importantly, we want to celebrate this wonderful moment in your life as you have now confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Just go ahead 
If you need a card, just wave your hand. Just say, Here, here's my hand, here's my hand. Go ahead and fill that card in and then pass it back to those people, all right? Just pass it back. They're in Phoenix as well. All right, let's go ahead. Pass those cards around. Write your details on that card and then give it back to that person or pass it down the line just so that we can rejoice with you. Nobody needs to feel shy or embarrassed. This is a phenomenal moment, and we're doing this because of time. Time. We're doing this because of time. Go ahead and fill out those cards while I'm talking. Go ahead and fill them out. Don't look at me. Look at the card. Fill out the card. Put your details down on the card. We want to rejoice with you and celebrate this wonderful time with you. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? While you're doing that, let me continue. The glory was a phenomenal thing on the Day of Atonement. The glory, the glory. The same glory that the high priest experienced in the most holy place was the glory that I believe Adam experienced. The same glory that came upon Israel. The same glory when they dedicated the tabernacle and the temple. It was the same glory that came upon the priests in that place. It was the same glory that covered Moses' face when he came down from the mount. It was the same glory that shone through the face of Jesus when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration. Hallelujah. And can I tell you something, church? It's going to be the same glory that is going to come on the church of Jesus Christ. Isaiah the prophet said in chapter 60, Verse 1, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them, I see the glory of God all over you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and His glory will be seen upon you. And the Gentiles, the Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Hallelujah. Interesting that Paul writes in Ephesians 5 and 27, and when he says, talks about the church and the bride, and as, as and a wife and a husband, and he talks about the church. Listen to what he says in Ephesians 5 and 27. It says that he might present to himself a glorious church. What kind of a church? I can't hear you in this Baptist church tonight. I can't hear you in this Dutch Reformed church tonight. A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you that the glory in the New Testament is far greater than the glory of the Old Testament. Can I say that one more time? The glory of the New Testament church far outweighs and far out eclipses the glory that was made evident in the Old Testament. The prophet Habakkuk says in Habakkuk 2 and 14, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. How's that going to happen? Is, it just gonna, is there going to be a hole in the sky and there's going to be this glory? It's going to be through the church. It's going to be through you and I. Hallelujah. People be talking about us being in the last days and Jesus is coming back any day. Any day, any day now, Jesus is coming back. But you, can I tell you something? When Peter got up on the day of Pentecost and they all got the baptism of the Holy Ghost right there 2,000 years ago, he said, these are the last days. We've been in the last of the last of the last of the last days. My goodness, and Jesus still hasn't come back. Do you know why? Because we haven't seen the glory on the church yet. I don't know about you. We're not going to get raptured any minute now just so that we can get out of the darkness and the chaos. What kind of a Christian are we anyways? Hallelujah. We're not afraid of the darkness, not afraid of the chaos, that we have to be rescued. And then 144,000 Jewish evangelists are supposedly going to do what you and I have failed to do at this moment in time. Very quiet in this, whatever church you want to be in tonight. Praise the Lord. Say, praise the Lord. 
Bump your neighbor and say, looks like we're here for some time still. Uh-huh, we're here for some time still. I don't know when that time is. Whenever the time is, I'll be ready. But until such time, hallelujah, we're going to occupy. We're going to lay hands on the sick. We're going to cast out devils. We're going to prophesy. We're going to win the lost at any cost. Hallelujah. And when Jesus decides to come back, we'll be ready. Bump your neighbor and say, are you ready? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Is there, is there any, is it any coincidence that the first couple of chapters in Genesis look like the last couple of chapters in Revelation? Why? Because what, how it started is going to be how it's going to end. How it started in Genesis it's going to be how it's going to end. It's not going to be four people holding on for dear life. And we're, if you don't come now, Jesus, we're going to backslide. It's going to be a glorious church. The same glory that was in that garden. And Adam flourished and prospered. And he spoke over animals. And he spoke over creation. It's the same kind of thing that's going to happen before Jesus comes back. Well, if you don't believe it, I believe it. But why is the Day of Atonement so important? Because right when the glory came, the high priest came out and he would proclaim, if it was the 50th year, right after the Day of Atonement, he would proclaim the year of Jubilee. Hallelujah! What does Jubilee mean? It means the time of shouting. Do we have any shouters in this place? That's why I've been telling you that silence is the voice of defeat. But those of you that know there's victory in God, we can lift up our voice and we can shout and dance and celebrate. Hallelujah. Jubilee was a time of shouting. Comes from the Hebrew word, yovel. Quite interesting that we had the grouch and the people from, were from yovel. Yovel, yovel, yovel. Yo, Val, I don't know. God was like prophetically saying something to us right there and there, and we didn't even know it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you know that from Adam till now, 6,000 years have transpired? And a jubilee was every 50 years. So if we take 6,000 and divide it by 50, it means that we have come through 120 jubilees. Hallelujah. 120 is a great number. I hope to get to that age pretty soon. A couple of years' time, I'll be 120. But 120 is a significant number. How many people were in that upper room? Huh? I can't hear you in this church. Back in Phoenix, how many people were in the upper room? 120. So 120 is the number of the end of the age of the flesh. And it is the age, the number of the age of the Holy Ghost. 120 received the Holy Ghost and they went into Jerusalem in the might and the power of the Holy Ghost and they turned Jerusalem the right side up for God. But on that 50th year, on the Day of Atonement, when Aaron had completed what was to be done, he emerged from the Holy of Holies and the trumpet began to sound to declare it was the year of Jubilee. four things that took place on the year of Jubilee. Four significant things that took place that I'm declaring are going to take place in your life, 2023. 2023, as we get ready, seven minutes to go. I don't know how many minutes to go, but four things that are going to take place. I, I want to, I'm speaking it prophetically and releasing it prophetically over your life. The four things were number one, it was a time of rest, not siesta, not like you don't have to work anymore, stay at home, chill, watch a goalie. I am not talking about that kind of a rest. But the land was to rest. And then they said, but if we don't sow, 
on the, uh, you know, the sixth year, what happens in the seventh? God said, don't worry, I'm going to take care of you for three more years. What you will reap on the sixth will spill over into the seventh, and it will spill over into the eighth, and it will spill over into the ninth. That is the power of God's rest. Now, he was talking about, he was talking about the land, the land, the land. He's talking about dust. But how many of you know you and I are dust? Huh? Do we have any dust people in this place? Anybody from outer space, you're not dust. You're made of some, I don't know, some, what do you call that stuff? Kevlar. You're a Superman. No, we're all made of dust. How many of you could do with the rest of God? Hallelujah. My body could do with some rest. No, no. I, 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 I'm not talking about resting on your Amtarara and doing uh, nothing all day. I'm talking about while you're going about doing what God has called you to do. There is the rest of God. There is the peace of God on the inside. That while there is darkness and bleakness and disorder out there on the inside of you, I'm declaring a time of rest. Secondly, it wasn't just a time of rest. It was a time of restoration. Hallelujah! It was a time where all that was lost, possessions, goods, assets, lands, properties, houses, farms. I'm declaring even for some of you warehouses, apartments, blocks of apartments, estates, hallelujah territories that were lost are going to be recaptured. Regions that were lost are going to be captured nationally and internationally. Hallelujah. It was a time of restoration of inheritances as well. It was a time where marriages and relationships were restored. I'm believing 23 is going to be a time of restoration. Can you say amen? Time of release. Number three, it was a time of release. This is where all the people were free from all of their debts. Some of you are saying, how is this going to work? How is it going to work? I don't know how it's going to work. I'm declaring a supernatural debt cancellation. Hallelujah! Better move along. Better move along. Number four. In that time of release, it was also... A release from all forms of diabolical servitude, slavery, and oppression. How many of you are ready to be free from all of that? What people have been thinking about you, what they've been speaking about you, their attitude towards you, you are going to be free of all of that in 2023 in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And then it was a time of rejoicing. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The joy. There's going to be a joy unspeakable, unspeakable joy, full of glory. Hallelujah. And they look at you and say, what are you on? What have you been smoking? What have you been drinking? But you'll say, this is my jubilee year. It is the time of my jubilation. It is a time where I get to celebrate. It is a time where I, there's a joy deep down in my soul. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? Can you say praise the Lord like you mean it? Now, this is what happened in Israel every 50 years. This was therefore, give me some music. Maestro. This is what happened in the Old Testament. And it was great. But you and I are living not in the Old Testament. We're in the New Testament based on better promises. Hallelujah. I want to tell you that our jubilee started when Jesus was on that cross. And with his mouth, he uttered these words. It is finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is finished was the sound of that trumpet blowing. And when Jesus said, it is finished, that was his moment declaring for you and I, those three words, hallelujah, that this is our jubilee declaration from Golgotha. It resounded and went into the 
outermost parts of the world and I am declaring hallelujah that this is our year of Jubilee this is not by way of any calendar this is by the Holy Ghost that we are declaring hallelujah 2023 to be our Jubilee I want everybody to stand up in this place Hallelujah. Over this coming month, we're going to be talking about, we're going to be unpacking this. There's, there's so much there, that I, I haven't had time to do that. Don't stop playing. Give, give me some background music. You, you can stop. I just keyboards. We're going to prophesy and declare this declaration tonight I want you to be fully convinced in your heart of hearts don't just say it because we're saying it bring in all the faith that you can mix in your faith with your confession it's quite a long one here so we've got about two hours to go before we go into midnight but as loud as you can there in Phoenix we're together with you we're standing together with you hallelujah I don't know. I think maybe we should just join hands right across the aisles. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that right now. Join it. Join hands right across the aisle. Right across the aisle. They're in Phoenix. Come on, because we want to come across as being of one heart, one mind, one voice, one heart, one vision. Then lift your voices, everybody. Take a deep breath. Can we get that declaration up? Get it up on the screen. Here we go. This is my year of Jubilee. As I step into 2023, I am prophetically declaring my season of rest, renewal, and refreshing. This is my season of restoration and total recovery of all that was lost, stolen, and taken from me. All properties, lands, houses, businesses, inheritances, and estates are coming back to me. Every financial blessing and business opportunity that was missed and lost is coming back to me greater than before. This is my season of freedom and release. I declare freedom from every form of debt, whether it be by supernatural debt cancellation or by the miraculous intervention of God's multiplied provisions into my life. I declare that through the inspiration of heaven-sent Holy Ghost creativity, 2023 will be a year of multiplied streams of income into my life. This is my jubilee year of liberty, freedom, joy, jubilation, and celebration. I am free from every man-made worldly opinion, philosophy, or ideology. I am free from people's perceptions and mindsets about me. I am free from every form of demonic oppressive spirit of servitude and slavery. I am free from all sin, sicknesses, infirmities, and diseases. I am free from all forms of depression, mental and emotional maladies. I am free from all fear, worry, and anxieties. I am free from all doubt, cynicism, criticism, negativity, and unbelief. I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God. I am who He says I am. I have what He says I have. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. As I lift Jesus up and magnify His name, I am declaring 2023 to be my year of Jubilee. Jesus is my Jubilee. He is my miracle worker, my way maker, my defender, my deliverer, my healer, my provider, my restorer. He is my all in all. And in Him I live and move and have my being. In Him I declare my Jubilee. I believe it and I receive it in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a praise offering. We're going to hand back over to Phoenix right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 2022 has been a year of breakthrough. Amen. Declare with us tonight. Say Jubilee 23. 
You know, we haven't done this. Let's give it up for our pastors for 2022. The best pastors in the world. We love you, Pastor John, Pastor George. Now we're gonna teach you a quick song. It's very simple. It goes as one, two. Jubilee, Jubilee, Jubilee. It's our time for Jubilee. Let's hear it, come on. Jubilee, Jubilee, Jubilee. It's our time. One more time, come on. Jubilee. Jubilee, a jubilee, it's my time for jubilee. Give Jesus a praise tonight. Now, it was declared when Jesus opened the scrolls, when he opened the scrolls, he said he's declaring the acceptable year. It was the year of jubilee. Amen. So we're going to declare tonight. Are you ready, Jesus? No. Are you ready at the back? Are you ready at the back? Are you ready on that side? All right, this first part, the Zulu part, we've got, we got four seconds, here we go. The Zulu part is saying, Jesus is our Jubilee. Here we go. Put your hands together, here we go.
Praise the Lord.